Yo, what's up guys? It's Salvaje from the Salvaje Cartel and <laughs> yesterday I made a video, I made an angry Gallahorn rant because <laughs> let's face it guys, the Gallahorn doesn't need to be nerfed, alright? But enough about that, I'm not going to talk about the Gallahorn in this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, actual exotic weapon changes that uh, Bungie's going to be bringing once the Taken King is out and yeah i'm also going to be speaking my mind on other exotic weapons as well so we're going to start off with the hard light they did say they were going to increase the stability of the hard light and they were going to increase the bounce count of the hard light projectiles and also the hard light projectiles are not affected by damage fall offs which means that when you're shooting someone across the map with the hard light it's still going to do the same damage that it does up close uh yeah i actually think this is pretty cool but just not enough I mean, we're going to have to see how uh, auto rifles are at the beginning of the Taken King, especially Monte Carlo, Soros Regime, all of these auto rifles. But I don't know, in my opinion, I think Hardlight needs a little bit of more impact. Honestly, I just think it's it's just not good enough. And, it, you know, that's why people use the Soros Regime. Uh, talking about the Necrochasm, in the other hand, I'm actually really glad that they are doing these changes into the Necrochasm. Uh, yeah, this is everything that I wanted on the Necrochasm. If you guys didn't check out my Necrochasm review, uh, it's go it's in my Destiny Weapons review playlist because I did say that Curse Bringer needs to be activated every time you get a headshot, and I also said that it needs a bigger magazine size like the Atheon Tapalog. And well, the stability is just pretty much a bonus. They're they're going to increase the stability from 60, and it was actually 40, which means that if you put the fitted stock perk, it's actually going to have like maximum stability, probably most likely. But yeah, I'm actually really glad that they're doing these changes to the Necrochasms. On top of the Cursebringer perk uh, always activating every time that you get a headshot, the Cursebringer explosion is actually going to be bigger and more powerful, which actually makes the weapon actually useful. Uh, but I don't know yet. You know, we are going to have to see how the Necrochasm is. Honestly, I still think that weapon needs more impact. The impact on that weapon is super, super weak. And I don't know what Bunty was thinking when they designed the Necrochasm, man. You know... Fatebringer, it's an awesome weapon. Gallahorn is an awesome weapon. It's an exotic, you know. Uh, Gallahorn, Icebreaker, th these are exotics that we brag about. And I feel like Necrochasm is just, you know, an exotic that people don't brag about, you know. I guess you could brag about it because you have it. But then again, it's not really worth having it because it fucking sucks. Uh, so the last word, the changes that they uh, did to it is reduce the range to 10. And uh, the range was actually 20. Uh, reduce the effective range while aiming down the sight. And of course, when you shoot from the hip, it doesn't you know lose accuracy like the hand cannon nerf that they're doing. And uh, they also fixed a bug that it was actually doing more damage to... What's this thing called? The Yeah, when, when shooting from the hip, it was doing increased precision damage. Honestly, I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty balanced. I don't really think the last word is going to really change that much. I think it's still going to be used a lot. Uh, but it's something to make it, you know, kind of uh, less powerful. And honestly, you really did need that. Uh, on the other hand, the Infamous Thorn, it's the most equipped primary weapon in PvP at all. Uh, I, I disagree with some of the changes with Thorn. For example, the damage over time, it doesn't matter because that means that uh, my Trials of Osiris team, or I'm sorry, I meant to say Trials of Thorn, the Trials of Thorn team that I'm going to be running with, all three of us are going to have Thorn, and that means that we're going to be killing people extremely fast because we're going to gang up on them with the Thorn. Uh, I think the base damage of the weapon uh, needs to be reduced instead of the base damage of Mark of the Devourer. Uh, Hawkmoon, I don't even think this weapon got patched. I mean, if you guys think about it, you can one-shot someone with the Hawk Moon, obviously, you know, by, you know, getting the two Luck in the Chambers. I mean, the two Lucky Aces and the Luck in the Chamber combined. But, yeah, that happens rarely. That has only happened to me twice. And I've been having the Hawk Moon for, like, the past maybe six or seven months. I don't know, maybe six months. Um, yeah, I've had the Hawk Moon for a long time. It's only happened twice, so that's not really a problem about the Hawk Moon. And they reduced the luck in the chamber damage by 3%. I don't really think that's going to make a huge difference, but hey, whatever. And they, they, they also added two more rounds to the Hawkmoon's magazine when holding aces is unlocked, which means you're going to have 15 bullets. And overall, I think these changes to the Hawkmoon are pretty okay. Uh, I'm not bad at, mad about the Hawkmoon. In fact, I'm actually glad I'm going to have 15 bullets into the Hawkmoon. That means I'm going to be able to kill even more people with the Hawkmoon. Um, so the other change is Icebreaker, they reduce the recharge rate from 5 seconds uh, to 8 seconds. This is not a problem at all, I don't really know why people are freaking out. 
less than in eight seconds uh eight times six i don't even know how it is 46 seconds yeah and 46 seconds i can go down to my kitchen prepare myself some food then come back here then shoot the six bullets then eat half of my food then shoot six bullets again and then finish my food shoot six bullets again this whole uh iceberg problem really isn't an issue because at the end of the day you were regenerating bullets anyway so i don't really think it's you know as big of a deal that people are uh you know making it Okay, the next weapon is the No Land Beyond. Honestly, they... <laughs> awesome, man. This weapon is fucking sick. I don't know why people hate on it. Honestly, I wouldn't have even cared if they wouldn't have fixed this weapon because I'm, 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 I'm a beast with the No Land Beyond. You guys have seen my Trials of Osiris and No Land Beyond. You guys saw my Trials of my, uh, No Land Beyond montage. But yeah, I'm actually really, really glad that they're actually going to fix the sight because the sight sometimes was pretty annoying. And they're actually going to add 20% more precision damage to the Master. Which honestly... It makes no difference at all because think about it. Every time you get a precision shot with an old and beyond, it's a one shot kill. So I disagree with this. Actually, uh, I say that instead of adding more precision damage to the, you know, to the old and beyond when the master is activated, yeah, uh, add 20% more damage to regular shots. You know, I'm talking about body shots to the old and beyond. Like for example. If we get two headshots in a row, the third bullet in the No Land Beyond should be an insta-kill, right? Uh, if it hits in the body, of course, you know? And if it hits in the head, you, you know, sure, why not? Uh, that's what I think about the No Land Beyond. Uh, let's talk about the Black Hammer now, because this is an issue. Uh, I don't really think it's a big issue, but, you know, people are making it an issue. And people have said uh, specific things to kind of uh, just uh, fix the Black Hammer. Uh, of course, now the white nail perk will pull ammo from your inventory and you're going to have 18 rounds in reserve, which honestly, it's not really a, a good thing. Black Hammer, you know, it was known for the kind of uh, quote unquote infinite bullets. It was really, really helpful in strikes and all that stuff. I don't really know why Bungie did this. It's mainly to just fuck us in the ass, I guess. Um, honestly, I'm, I don't I don't agree with this. You know, Black Hammer, it's a pretty all right weapon. It's not overused. Uh, I'm pretty sure people still use the icebreaker. I don't know, man. Honestly, Black Hammer. Uh, a kid on Reddit said, "If we, can we use the crux of crud on the Black Hammer and turn it into an exotic, and White Nail doesn't uh, get uh, ammo from the inventory?" Honestly, that's what I think. Hey, you know, if Bundy wants to do it or not, that's up to them. Uh, the Lord of Wolves got the tripped recovery boost bonus for allied, uh, granted by I mean tripled the recovery boost bonus uh, granted by the Lord of Wolves. I think this is really, really helpful, but honestly, I think the Lord of Wolves might need a little bit of more range, but I have some friends disagreeing with me, so I can't really say anything about that. The Galahorn, I made a video, an angry rant on the Galahorn, so if you, wanna, if you guys want to hear my thoughts on it, make sure to check the video on top. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to join the Salvaje Cartel.